There's so much I could say about Steve Arterburn way back in the old days when we were doing a parenting show. We first met Steve, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, had to, I said, how many books have you written? Over 100. Yeah, author or co-author of over 100 books. Yeah. yeah. And, and how many Bibles with a specific focus? 12. Bible studies, 12, 12. of those. Uh, teaching pastor at Heartland mm -hmm. Church in Indianapolis. Very rewarding. To get you weren't to. even living there the last time no, I saw you. No, no. I, I wanted to be closer to my Canadian friends, really. Yeah. I needed to do that. You are such a hamster. <laughs> uh, counselor, author, speaker, founder of New Life Ministries. Uh, how many centers for Well, we have about 1,000 uh, counselors in our network around the country. And so surprisingly, the founder of Women of Faith right. Conferences takes a man, I guess, to know what a woman needs. Yeah, I, I don't think that was it, but Did, you know, God used me in spite of me. It That's sure, sure worked. Yeah. And I think this is really going to work, the seven minute marriage solution. And not just because you wrote it, Steve, but you road tested it. Yeah, we did, yeah. And it, it's proven that if a person will take their spouse and for seven minutes get into God's Word at least four times a day, it will change them and it will change the nature of their relationship. So. Now I want to hang on to some, especially some women right now, because you say there's hope even if your marriage partner isn't willing to cooperate. Right. What is the hope? Well, in this book, um, I, I give you seven things that will help your marriage and seven things that will, if you stop doing them, and seven things that will help if you will uh, start. And then I tell you on each one what to do if your spouse doesn't respond. For instance, one of the things that I say to stop doing that will help your marriage is to stop enabling whatever problem your spouse has. Now that comes from a proverb, Proverbs 10:10, 10, 10, where it says that if we wink at wrong, we cause trouble, but an open rebuke brings lasting peace. Now just think about that. How many times do we look at something and we just say, oh, you know, I'm not going to deal with it or whatever. You know, maybe his drinking will get better or maybe the gambling or the pornography or whatever because we don't want to rock the boat. Mm -hmm. And so I say, do whatever you have to do to stop keeping the peace because God doesn't honor peacekeepers. He honors peacemakers. The Bible some, does say expose sin. And sometimes you have to disturb the peace mm -hmm. to make peace. So you need to confront the reality of the situation, especially when your children are being impacted. Okay, so what do you do when he doesn't respond? Well, what does the Bible say to do? It says, go get some help. Mm -hmm. Get somebody else. Bring someone else in and, and ask them with you uh, to confront him. And then, uh, if that doesn't work, then there may need to be a separation. Not a divorce, but there may need to be a separation where he's facing, or she, the reality of uh, and the consequences of their decision. So in each one of these things, I try to bring you through uh, what to do when the other person doesn't respond. That but, separation can be a wake-up call. Yes, but these are t sometimes these are tough things. Now, you know, um, one of the things that I say will definitely help your marriage is for both of you to find out whatever it is you need to do to respond romantically to each other. To I'll, be, be, I'll bet that comes up in the diagnostic that you start the book with. <laughs> yeah, it does. Because a lot of people, uh, they have friendship relationship or they have antagonistic relationship, but they have no intimate relationship. And there is something about the sexual intimacy that does something for our relationship that nothing else does. And when we let that part of the relationship die, we're really uh, destroying a huge part of, of, of what, what God, God is. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. As if I had out of my own mouth. You said <laughs> it. So, so what if he's been unfaithful? And uh, what if you can't trust him? And, and, or what if um, she has been abused and that didn't come up until after the marriage? Well, then you have to get whatever help is needed. And, and, and do not just pray. Because uh, it's good to pray, and it's good to ask God to fix things. But a lot of times, God's waiting for us to do what we're waiting for God to do. 
it, it, it takes a bold move to, to call somebody and ask uh, for help or, or find a specialist. And to me, uh, sometimes we just use prayer as an excuse to be lazy or to justify just keeping the peace, and, and that isn't going to help anything. Good examples of uh, something to start and something to stop. Um, you said yesterday that we have to start thinking about marriage differently, mm -hmm. actually upside down. Yeah. What did that mean? Well, um, you go into marriage thinking how great it's going to be for you. And, um, you know, there is this thing that needs to develop to replace romantic love. It's very different than romantic love. It's compassionate love. Mm. If I don't have compassion for my spouse, if I don't care about the pain that she's in or the struggle or, or whatever it is, then You're I You're just going to do what feels good for you. Well, exactly. But if I develop a compassionate love, then every time something comes up, it's going to affect me. I'm going to care about that. I'm not going to shut that down. I'm going to care and I'm going to be there for my spouse with this compassionate love. But I also need to stop thinking we're going to fix all this out here on our own. I need a supportive community. Mm. And, and the Bible is, is so strong on a supportive community. So if I'm going to develop intimate connection, I need compassionate love, not just romantic love, and I need a supportive community. That's kind of different than uh, what we would think would make a marriage work. But We would hope the church would be that. Yes, Wouldn't we would. We? But I talk about the foundation being three things that everybody needs to make a marriage work. One is clarity. You need to know that other person. And so honesty is required by the other person. And you need security. You need to know that if she says she's going to be somewhere, that that's where she'll be, or he's going to do that, that there is um, a trust in the consistency that's there. Mm -hmm. But then also serenity. You need to have a peace about that relationship. And so many people get into a relationship where it's all conflict. Mm -hmm. and it comes the norm. And maybe that's what they're used to. But if you want a good relationship, are you clear about who this person is? Do you feel secure with them? And is there this peace, this serenity that's there? Those are three really big pillars for a great relationship. You give another foundational emphasis, and maybe we're just assuming it here, but I think it's good to hear you say it, and that is a common goal, and that being honoring God. Yeah. Maybe we're going to think twice about a, a rash decision if we're really looking in the same direction, beyond our personal feelings, we want to honor God. Yeah. Um, you know, there are a couple of exceptions in the Bible for divorce um, where you could actually divorce and, and be honoring God because you're separating yourself from the evil that's being done there uh, when, when she's unfaithful or he's unfaithful. But uh, even in those situations, you want to try to make that work with, with forgiveness. And that so honors God. But other than those exceptions, pretty, pretty difficult for somebody to rationalize that my divorce is going to honor God. And you know, this is supposed to all be about God. It was and his idea in the first place. So uh, another reason why the seven minute marriage solution is so important because it gets you back to God's word and changes your perspective and framework from this is all about me, my comfort, my good feelings, to I really do need to make this marriage speak to the love that God has given me and given to other people. I think my favorite marriage verse is Ecclesiastes 4.12, a cord of three strands yes, well, is not easily broken. There is God, that right. third strand. You know, you are one of three uh, authors here that I'm speaking to at Breakforth that seems to be trying to throw out a life ring for marriage. Yeah. And I'm so pleased to see that, Steve. Well, let me just mention real quick, that third chord mm. often is him, her, and pornography. Him, oh. her, or an affair. Him, her, or alcohol. And what I'm trying to get people to do is replace that third chord with God mm. through God's Word. Wonderful. I met a young mother at breakfast whom I have not seen in probably four or five years. 
and the last time I saw her, she was in a marriage crisis. Mm. And I forgot what I had said to her, but she told me what I'd said. And that was simply that, you know, you're going to have to do some work, but it'll be worth it. Yes. And it's just wonderful today to see that she is in a different place. And our uh, previous generation did the work. They took the commitment yeah, they seriously, sure and they plowed through all kinds of they things. They did. And in many cases, reaped the reward. Yes, that's right. Well, the research shows that people that want to divorce and stay together are much happier five years later than people that want to divorce and get it. it. It's all right there. It's amazing when research proves the Bible to be true. Steve, thank you for capturing so much and bringing these marvelous tools. They are at our e-store. Uh, the seven minute marriage solution. I always want to say miracle. This is the seven kind of minute miracle. marriage miracle. Yeah, you can call it that. Because it produces miracles. Yeah. And the seven minute devotional Bible to really help you get into that seven minutes a day with your spouse, four times a week. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks. Steve. Thank you. God bless you. And you.